I'm going to show you how to paint a simple acrylic landscape using just one brush. I'm going to use two sets of primary colours, so I'm going to keep the colour mixing really, really simple. I'm going to talk to you all about the basics of acrylics, how to make a stay wet palette. And this tutorial is suitable for beginners. So I really hope you're going to enjoy it. And if you do, don't forget, if you haven't already, to subscribe to my acrylic painting channel where you will get updates of my latest tutorials. If you'd like a full list of the materials I'm using, please see the description below. So shall we get started? So what I'm going to do first of all is I'm using these leftover acrylics that I um, previously painted with a speed painting. And so it's cobalt blue and white. I'm using acrylic paper and I put some framing tape around the edge so I can get a really nice white border. It's a really nice way of presenting your work. So what I'm doing now is I'm adding a little bit of pink and white. So I'm really going to paint this lovely kind of almost like a sunset sky not too over the top, just very subtle. This painting is from my imagination. It's been inspired by lots of different photographs that I've taken and just thoughts and images in my head. But the thing I think is really um, good about it is a nice, simple painting for you to start off with if you've just started out in acrylic painting. So I've added some yellow here to my pink and white. I'm just blending with this flat three quarter inch synthetic brush. So the materials I'm using here are really simple. You don't have to spend a fortune. When you're starting out in acrylics, I'm using white paint now with a touch of yellow and I'm blending with my fingertips. It gets very messy, but I enjoy it. So you've got to let go. But if you don't like the mess on your hands, you can use gloves or you can just use your brush to blend with if you like. So I'm just paling off the horizon now as it comes sort of just below halfway. So the composition's really nice and simple. I've added a little smidge of yellow there. So I'm, I'm actually working with a Stay Wet palette. So all these paints are from a previous painting, as I said. So I'm using three, two sets of primary colours, a warm and a cool set. A full list can be found in the description below, along with all the materials I'm using. And I've also got a beginner's starter video there as well, just to explain all the materials that I'm using. But a Stay Wet palette stops the acrylic from drying out and I've made a homemade one there so I've got a plastic box some paper towel which I've wet and then I have put some parchment paper or grease proof paper over the top so you can actually put your acrylics on top of that and it really stops them from drying out it's brilliant so that's a little bit there of some blue and a bit of pink with some white and it's just really for some distant land there to, and so you paint cooler colors in the distance sort of softer lighter tones so it creates depth and I'm just sort of painting a tiny bit of detail there a few little brush marks just to kind of give some information but I don't want to pull it forward too much with too much detail too much dark or too much warm color so this is a very sort of light cool blue for the water here so it's the white with some cobalt blue and a little bit of tiny bit of pink so this is a little bit of um, pale down greenish shade here i'm using a little bit of the phthalo turquoise or the blue cyan blue and a little bit of yellow with a touch of white so I'm just painting this color it's quite neutral and this is all wet on dry and just really loading that brush and blending it on to the acrylic paper Thank you. 
It's lovely, that music, isn't it? Um, I'm just putting some yellows, a little bit of the red here, just blending it onto the damp paint just to really get some interest here in the middle and in the foreground. You notice in the foreground I've got some warmer colours that really brings it forward. It's something called aerial perspective and I'm using that um, by using warm colours to bring them forward, larger shapes, darker tones, more detail, more textures. And it really does um, create depth in your painting. So even though I paint a very um, impressionist style of painting, I still like to stick to those. I, I don't like to call them rules, but they're really good tools to use to create depth in your painting. Even when I work in a semi-abstract style, I like to stick to them. So I'm using the same brush, just one brush here, and I'm tapping in some of this yellow and blue paint mixed. So I've actually got some just yellow, pure yellow on my brush, sort of tapped it in there. And I'm actually just tapping in some blue now as well to create some darks and textures. This is a fun thing to do. I'm actually just using the bottom of my paintbrush to actually sort of draw in and scratch in to the wet paint. It just creates a little bit of de texture as well there. And I'm just sort of dobbing the brush to make it look a little bit more natural. It's amazing the marks that you can get from just one flat brush. I'm just using the tip there to paint some grasses and I'm now going to paint some water here. Paint some water, but it uh, sounds funny when I say it. But it's just a very, very pale blue. I want the light to come from the sky and be reflected in the water. So you're really sort of dazzled by it. And I've kept the composition really simple. So it, it kind of gives you that sort of inspiration and confidence to have a go yourself. And you don't have to use the same colours as me as well. Just try and stick to those sort of warm and cool, cool for the distance, light and dark tones, light in the distance, unless it's your focal point, textures in the foreground, just sticking to those, but you can actually use your own colour palette. So I'm just painting in a little bit of reflection here using some of the dark bluey green and I'm blending it with my fingertip there just to sort of make it look soft. So there's a little bit of grass is being reflected in the water to create a little bit of depth and detail. And I'm doing Doing it on the right hand side here as well. My painting has dried here and I'm just building up now lighter colours. So in acrylics, um, you work dark to light. So I'm saving all my light tones here with the yellow paint, painting wet on dry, again using the tip of my brush. 
and the side of my brush, you know, just to really get lots of different marks. So you're thinking to myself, well, you use light colours at the beginning. Yes, because obviously the sky is light, but areas where you see darker tones, don't put the lights on until the sort of end or sort of three quarters of the way through the painting. And for some areas, try not to use white as well. Obviously, you can't avoid it in the water or the sky, but other areas, try and keep away from white until the end because it really will create a lot more impact. Little tip for you there. It took me years to learn that. And um, I'm just adding a little bit more of the yellow, really just creating some texture here in the middle ground using the tip of my brush. paint a little bit more sort of slightly stronger tones in the distance it looked almost too pale I wanted to balance out the picture so I've just put this sort of steely grey colour and a way to get a lovely grey is to use a cool blue that's the cyan blue or a Prussian blue and mix it with a warm red you know cadmium red Windsor red um, something like that and then or even an orange and mix them together and add a little bit of white and you get a beautiful grey. You can also use browns and blues to get a grey as well but I like that sort of grey with a touch of kind of a violet hue. I'm using my plastic card, it's just a store card cut up and I'm actually printing some dark paint, you can use paint, print lighter paint as well with the card and you can do this wet on dry but it just creates a little bit of interest and detail and darks in the foreground. So it's a good time to let your painting dry and I thought I'd put some poppies or red flowers in the foreground. Again, this is a very warm colour and it's just to bring this painting forward, the foreground that is, to create depth. So I'm using the sort of side and tip of my brush there, it's just the same flat brush and I'm just applying this paint and you can see it really gives it a little pop. It gives it interest as well and it's fun to do. And try to vary the size of those flowers. Maybe have a couple bigger, some smaller so they look like buds and it just creates that little bit of interest. As you saw there, I used a bit of yellow as well to create a lighter colour. I'm actually made up of violet here. So I've used the pink, the cobalt blue, um, some white and a little bit of water to water it down. And I'm spattering this slightly liquid paint onto the surface. If it's not coming off, um, try to water it down a little bit more. Um, if you don't like spattering, which I completely understand, you can just stipple this with the side of your brush as well. And if you can't get the smaller marks with a larger brush, by all means use a slightly smaller brush. Um, I thought I'd paint some birds in the sky. Now this is a challenge and possibly I should have gone to a smaller brush, but I was kind of sticking to my rules here, just using one brush. So um, painting in these birds here was a little bit tricky, but um, I've just used a sort of a gray color that I use for the distant hills there. So you can use a blue, the red, and a touch of white to finish off. And of course, one last spatter. And again, this really helps me to stop. It stops me painting. I think, I think one of the, the best things I can teach you is to stop just before your painting is finished. Almost you're just really enjoying it. Sometimes that's when we can overwork. So remember, in acrylics, less is more. I've removed my framing tape now, so I've got a really nice white border. 
Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. I really hope you've enjoyed it and it's inspired you to have a go at painting a really simple landscape scene, sunset sky with some water and birds with some flowers as well. If you have any questions about this tutorial, please put them in the comments section below. And if you'd like to see more tutorials like this, don't forget to subscribe to my acrylic painting channel. Thank you again for watching. Happy painting. Bye for now.